وَلَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنًا Because you have in the Messenger of Allah a fine example. He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was the most forgiving of people, the most pardoning of people. It takes a very, very, very big heart to be forgiving. We all know this. The adults here, everybody knows this. You've been through things in life. Someone's done you over. You want to forgive, but it's hard. It's tough. Your ego, all of that comes into play. Your izza, your self-respect, your dig all of these things, they come into play. Your dignity it comes into play. So it takes a big heart to be able to forgive. It doesn't mean that you have to be naive. It doesn't mean that you have to be naive. There's a difference between forgiving and being naive and gullible. So if you know someone's going to harm you, then yes, there is a certain way of dealing with them. But as for forgiving from your heart, the Messenger والسلام, was the most forgiving and the most pardoning of people. Just take the example of that woman, that Jewish woman. What did she do? What did she do? famous story about the Jewish woman she poisoned some meat the messenger alayhi salatu wasalam, he had that meat served to him now when they came to know that this meat is poisoned then they seized that woman they got hold of that woman what did they say to the messenger alayhi salatu wasalam? hadith in al-adab al-mufrat sahih imam al-bukhari al-adab al-mufrat they said, Allah naqtuluha, shall we not kill her? The messenger said, no. What type of head of state are you going to find doing that? Someone has tried to assassinate him. Tried to kill him. Not just kill him, kill his ministers. Kill those that are close to him. Yet the messenger, alayhi salatu wasalam, forgave her. Anas ibn Malik, the narrator of the hadith, he said, I continue to see it. Meaning the poison. I continue to see it, the effects of the poison in the laha of the Messenger alayhi salatu wasalam, in that flesh that dangles at the back of the mouth. I continue to see the effects of the poison in the uvula of the Messenger alayhi salatu wasalam. Yet the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam forgave her. It takes a big heart to do that. And Allah jalla wa ala therefore, he spoke, he spoke the truth when he said, wa innaka la ala khuluqin azim. Indeed you, O Muhammad, you're upon a high standard of character. Allah's Messenger alayhi salatu wasalam, from his mannerisms, from his etiquettes, is that he was kind, he was soft, he was gentle, he was playful with people like you, small children here. The Messenger alayhi salatu wasalam, he was playful with the children. He would play with the children. Yahya ibn Murrah, in another narration recorded in Al-Adab al-Mufrad of Imam al-Bukhari, and all of these narrations were declared sahih by Imam al-Albani, or authenticated by Imam al-Albani. He said that on an occasion we went out with the Messenger of Allah alayhi salatu wasalam because we were invited for dinner, for food. But then lo and behold, Somebody was on the path. Do you know who was on the path? Al-Husayn. Rabbi Allah ta'ala anhu an abihi. Do you know who Al-Husayn was? Al-Husayn was the grandson of the Messenger alayhi salatu wasalam. Small boy. So Yahya ibn Murrah, he said that when the Messenger saw Al-Husayn, he proceeded forward. He went forward ahead of his companion. He went forward at a quicker pace than his companions. But remember this, that the companions are still behind him, watching what is happening. The messenger, the messenger he went forward, and he stretched out his arms, alayhi salatu wasalam. Why? Do you know why the messenger began to stretch out his arms? Because he, want, he wanted to catch al Hussein. He wanted to get hold of Al-Husayn, to grab Al-Husayn. So the Messenger alayhi salatu wasalam stretched out his hands. فَجَعَلَ يَمُرُّ هَا هُنَا وَهَا هُنَا And he began to move here and move there. 
Yani al Hussein, his grandson, the little boy, is trying to dodge his grandfather. He's trying to dodge Muhammad ibn Abdullah. He's trying to dodge Rasulullah alayhi salatu wasalam while the messenger is trying to catch him. Yudahikuhu. Making Hussein laugh up until he grabbed hold of al Hussein Rabbi Allah ta'ala. Who does that? What type of person do you find doing that? A person, he'll say, I'm not going to do that, play with kids outside in public. Everyone's going to, I'm going to lose my integrity. People, they're going to think I'm a childish person. Yet the messenger, alayhi salatu wasalam, in front of his sahaba, not behind closed doors, outside in public, in front of his companions, he's there playing catch with his grandson, making his grandson laugh. Why did the Messenger alayhi salatu wasalam do that? What made him be like that? Because Allah jalla wa ala had blessed him. Allah jalla wa ala had favored him. He had granted him that hiba, that gift of husnul khuluq, of good manners. And thus Allah jalla wa ala spoke the truth when he said, Wa innaka la ala khuluqin azim. Indeed, you, O Muhammad, are upon a high standard of character. Allah's Messenger alayhi salatu wasalam. From his akhlaq is that he would smile, smile at his companions. Why? Because smiling in the face of your brother is not an act that is of nominal value. But rather smiling at the face of your brother, the messenger, the messenger himself said, is an act of charity. Rather, Abdullah ibn al-Harith, Abdullah ibn al-Harith, he said in a narration recorded by Imam Tirmidhi, declared Sahih by Imam Al-Albani. He said, "Ma ra'aytu ahadan akthara tabassuman min Rasulillah sallallahu alayhi wasallam." I never saw anyone that smile more than the Messenger of Allah alayhi salatu wasalam. And he did not just stop at smiling. Rather, from the akhlaq, from the manners. From the etiquette, from the characteristic, from the character of the best of creation, alayhi salam, is that he would engage in joke with his companion. He would engage in light banter, light humor with his companions, with one Allah ta'ala alayhi. The companions, they asked him in another narration, in the narration of Abu Huraira in Al Adab al Mufrad, Ya Rasulullah. Innaka tuda'ibuna O Messenger of Allah Indeed you Play with us You joke with us And the Messenger said Inni la aqulu illa haqqa Indeed I do not say Anything except the truth Meaning when I joke I joke I engage in this banter However None of my jokes None of the humor None of the banter Has any lies within them Unlike the comedians who make people laugh by making up a story, by lying. An example of that, an example of the mizah, the humor of the Messenger alayhi salatu wasalam, is that famous incident recorded by Imam al-Bukhari again in his al-Adab al-Mufrad from Anas radiallahu ta'ala an, that the Messenger alayhi salatu wasalam said to Anjasha, Anjasha, who was a cameleer, a camel driver. He would drive the camels. And what the cameleer does, he does al hida He does a chant. He chants, Ya Allah. He chants in order to get the camels moving faster. On this occasion, the Messenger, alayhi salatu wasalam, had his wives as well upon the camels. And Jasha is doing the hida making the camels go faster. So the Messenger alayhi salatu wasalam, he said, Ya Anjasha, Ruwaydan salqaka bil tawarir. Go steady in your driving with these fragile tawarir, with these fragile vessels, these fragile containers, these fragile tawarir. Nowadays we, we call tawarir bottles. The sub-narrator of the hadith, he said the Messenger used a term here. Which if one of us was to have said it, people would end up rebuking us for it. What's the statement? Describing the women as qawarir. Describing the women 
as fragile containers. What happens when a fragile container? Imagine, you have a glass bottle on top of a high place. It falls down. What happens to that glass bottle now? Ah, what happens, Jai Khwan? Smashes to pieces. Breaks into little bits. So the Messenger, alayhi salatu wasalam, here in this narration, he is saying, be easy, because the women, they're like, they're like glass bottles. Like glass containers. If they fall down, they're going to break and smash into little pieces. This was the humor of the Messenger, alayhi salatu wasalam. Another example of his humor. Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha narrates. In a narration that Shaykh al-Bani declared sahih in Silsilat al-Ahadith al-Sahihah. In this narration, an old woman comes to the Messenger alayhi salatu wasalam. Why does she come to him? Because she wants to ask him something important, obviously. What's the thing that she asked him? She said, Ya Rasulullah, ud'u Allah li an, y- an yudkhilani al-jannah. O oh, Messenger of Allah, make dua to Allah for me. He enters me into Jannah. He enters me into paradise. What does the Messenger alayhi salatu wasalam say? He says, Ya Umma Fulan, O oh mother of so and so, Inna al Jannata la yadkhuluha ajuz. O oh mother of so and so, indeed paradise, an old woman can't go inside it, can't go into paradise. So what happens? The old woman turns around, she walks away, and she starts to cry. So the Messenger alayhi salatu wasalam, sends his companions, saying to her, saying to them, to tell her that all women, young or old, all of them will enter into paradise being equal in age.